What's up guys, Jake here. After having some fun making a couple videos about UFOs, we're back to talking about finance. And in today's video, let's do an update to my brokerage account challenge. In the event you don't know who I am or what I'm doing, check out that playlist down below. And my account as of Thursday, June 3rd, uh, it was another red day, uh, down three consecutive, four consecutive days. Once again, I was so close to hitting my goal. I'm still up 19,000 on, or 19,900 on my cost basis since January 1st, but I've been stuck in neutral. You look at where I was uh, mid-April, it's now early June, and I'm just trading sideways, pretty much uh, along with the market. The S&P 500 basically hit 4,200 once again mid-April and has been trading sideways for almost two months now. So when you look at my account balance and you look at the S&P 500, there's definitely a correlation occurring here. These are my positions as of my last update video on May 28th. You can pause the video if you want to see specific positions and it has changed to this. Now, if you ever want to see my account positions or my account history, you can go to the community tab on my YouTube page. I always post screenshots there. And first thing I want to highlight is uh, the reduced number of positions. It all fits on one page again. So I'm currently only in seven companies and I'm holding $17,500 in cash because I'm, I'm basically just waiting for a pullback in the market to jump in. When we look at the S&P, this just kind of happens every month or two. There's, a, there's like a three to 4% drop and then all the finance YouTubers say the whole market is gonna crash. There was one uh, that happened almost a month ago, but I, I had no buying power in my accounts and I was just kicking myself. So I'm gonna let the S&P do this, just perfectly trade sideways because it's not going up. With stimulus ending and uh, unemployment benefits ending and this infrastructure bill stalled out in Congress and uh, state and local governments saying, you know, people, the pandemic's over, people gotta go back to work no more free money. Uh, definitely, I think a contraction in the market could occur. And best case scenario, the market just continues trading sideways like it has the last two months. So I took a hatchet to my account and I just cut off all the dead branches. So I sold my shares in Discovery. I sold to close the call, uh, the covered call. I sold on my shares. I sold to close PH, uh, PHM, DHI, NDAC, and one of my three uh, calls on Facebook. So let's let's just go through each of the positions. Now with Discovery stock, this is just a sad story that it was being exploited by Archegos. It got all the way up to 77. Archegos was margin called. The stock was then drifting down and maybe it could have recovered, but then on this merger news with Time Warner being spun off from AT&T, it's, it's stuck in a downtrend. You'll notice that the share price has not gotten back above its 20 day moving average in, in over two months. So this stock is probably gonna keep downtrending. Where's it gonna bottom out? I don't know, maybe, maybe mid twenties, but I need to just accept my losses with this one. It's not coming back. And there's no amount of covered calls I can sell on it to recoup my cost basis. I'm just down. The home builders are PHM and DHI, and I just, I just got hit by a truck. You know, I, I saw them shooting up huge like this, and I said, oh, I'm a believer, this thing is in an uptrend. Their fundamentals look so good. Everything about them, uh, their, their, their PDE, their price to free cash flow, they buy back shares, uh, their revenue is growing like mad. But the skepticism is with shortages in, in, in building materials, uh, increasing costs of materials like lumber, with uh, potential that bond yields will go up or interest rates will go up. Um, you know, there's gonna be a slowdown uh, a year from now. When you look at the home builders, the, the, their previous high, aside from today, was back in 2006. They were building like mad. Well, what shortly happened after 2006? You can look at their financial statements and their revenue dropped by like 70% uh, because of the, the housing crash in 2008. I'm not saying there's going to be another housing crash, but there's a reason why large firms are, are, are not buying these stocks, even though their fundamentals look great. So I'm just going to cut my losses. I thought maybe 
they would recover, get back above their 50-day uh, and 20-day moving average, but nope, they got rejected four days, four red days in a row. I, I just give up. With NDAC, this stock is still looking pretty good. It's in a clear upward trend. However, when the market had a sell-off uh, a month ago, uh, this one took a huge dip. It, it lost like five or six percent. So my my attitude is, uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna exit this. Wait for there to be a, a, a tech sell-off, similar to like how there seems to be every month or two, and then I'll just buy back in if I want to. I'll, I'll evaluate which stocks and positions are the best, uh, but as long as I'm above, above my cost basis for NASDAQ right now, I'm just gonna buy to close or sell to close, and then I'll come back if I really want to. So Clorox is no longer my only loss position. I'm just gonna go ahead and eat it on those shares of Discovery. Uh, I only made $5 on my covered call because I wanted to sell these shares. PHM, DHI uh, down massive together, you know, about $1,000. But I did sell for a profit one of my covered calls on Facebook. It was expiring in, in a month and a half. And then I got back above my cost basis for NDAC. So I freed up all of this cash that I can redeploy when the next uh, market pullback occurs. Here's a spreadsheet with all my trades going back to January 1st, and there's a lot of black on here, a lot of positive, but I now got these, these red, uh, these four red blips. So I, I, I feel like I've been stuck in a rut the last month and a half, but I need to keep it in perspective amongst all my positions. So here we are. So let's go ahead and catch up on the charts for all my other positions. And the first one is Costco. I sold a put. I'm betting that Costco's share price is going to go down. And the last two days, it's gone up, which is making me a little bit nervous. I think if Costco's share price gets back above the 20-day and then gets back to an all-time high of 387, I need to uh, sell to close this put contract I buy and just concede defeat. This is the first time for this challenge that I've taken a short position and it's not going well, but uh, I, I need to uh, just just give it a week to breathe. Uh, you know, the, their earnings report was phenomenal, but it's already run up so huge. The valuations, I've looked at the fundamentals. This company is grossly overvalued. A lot of people made, made money uh, by bringing the stock down er, uh, last winter. So I'm hoping those people will join me in, uh, in, 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 in causing a pullback just so you can get back in and on the way up. But once again, my price target uh, it, for Costco is if we can get this stock to fall below 360. Dana here is down huge and it's not my fault, guys. It's not my fault. Uh, Dana here announced, it, it fell on news. So you see this massive red bar here, but it fell on news that they were acquiring this Vancouver company, Pre Precision Nanosystems. And why is this bad, you say? It's because they're going to issue new stock to do this. Uh, the previous quarter, Dana here issued stock uh, for something else, and it didn't. It didn't really affect the company. I, I still. I don't like it when companies are issuing new shares to make acquisitions, but I get it. And I was still thinking because the fundamentals are good that uh, this stock could have a nice uptrend. However, I think this sell-off is just on the news, and that it will bounce back if we can. Ugh, if we can just get this back to 250, I, th I think I should get out of this position as well. I mean, you would not, I, you tell me, does this look like an uptrend to you? <laughs> so uh, maybe when this gets back down to its 100 day moving average, it'll bounce back up. I'm, be I'm maybe being a little hopeful here. I'm down huge on this call contract. And if I can just gain a little bit of it back, you know, let the news settle down about the acquisitions, hopefully some buyers step in. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get back above my cost basis on Dana here. With Adobe, it's still doing its thing. Its quarterly earnings is being reported soon, and I, I know it's going to be phenomenal. Where is it going right now? I don't know. Three consecutive red days. It, it might drift all the way down to its 100 or 200 day moving average. If it did that, I would buy another call contract and just wait for it to get back to 525. I'm confident in the next month, month and a half, it will get back to 525, which is a pretty good share price movement from where it currently is. 
With Facebook, the uptrend is still good. Uh, you'll notice there's not a lot of volume of trade, not a lot of buying, not a lot of selling. It's just kind of drifting sideways. But as long as it stays above that 20 day moving average, as soon as it gets close to it, buyers are gonna step in. I think Facebook's gonna keep going up. This stock, in my opinion, is gonna get to 350 within, within the next couple months, probably by the end of the summer. The stock graph for HCA is still looking beautiful. Uh, I mean, does it, does it get any cleaner than that? And if there's any kind of market red day where the whole market has a pullback, then I probably will buy another call contract on HCA. It's performing probably my best uh, in my account right now. Same thing with Selenese. I feel like it shot up huge right when I got in and it's been trading sideways but it's been staying above that 20 day moving average. Buyers step in when it gets close to the 20 day. So I think uh, if we can just get some volume of trade down here, this is, this is ready to shoot up and get above 170. Marsh and McLennan is also looking pretty good. We've got five consecutive green days. I like that. It's probably gonna have a pullback because it's gotten pretty far ahead of its 20 day moving average. I think once again, if there was any kind of total market pullback red day, uh, and this one pull back at all, I would probably buy another call contract on MMC. So that's my positions. I just have one put contract on Costco and then call contracts on these six companies. And I like these six, uh, maybe not Dana here, but I like these five. And if there's any kind of uh, severe red day in the markets, I think these uptrends will still hold or these price targets will hold. Uh, so I'll probably just invest more into these companies. Now, do I want to become a bear? Do I want to short buy puts on other companies that I think are overvalued? And I'm just not quite ready to do that. I think uh, the market's gonna continue to drift this summer and the time to start uh, betting big that the market will take a downturn is probably uh, late July, August, uh, anticipating a another Labor Day drop. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, if you have any comments or questions about my stocks or positions or anything at all, or if you know something I don't, let me know down below. Love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care.